Okay, I guess we'll get moving here. Uh, first of all, good evening and thank you for tuning in. My name is Eric Osgood. I'm the chair of the Johnson Select Board and the Emergency Management Director, EMT, for the Town of Johnson. I am here to talk about what the Select Board has taken as necessary precautions, as well as my role as the EMD for Johnson. And then we'll, we will uh, open it up for questions. Good evening. My name is Gloria Smith, Emergency Management Operations and Chairman of the Village Trustee. Our community has experienced many types of emergencies. I've worked with air on many types, but we never thought to be invited that we'd ever be in a situation like this. These emergencies that were in the past were just located to a certain section of our community. This virus has a potential of being anywhere in our community, and no one is exempt. I'm proud of being a member of this local incident command structure. Eric and I are working cooperatively in this event, and this is once again where all of our community and elected officials are working towards a common goal. Cooperation has been excellent. The priority for the select board is the safety and health of our employees, families, as well as the general public. Everything we have put in place has been done to protect and mitigate the amount of exposure between the public and employees, as well as between the employees themselves. However, let me stress in the strongest messaging the working relationship between the town and village is in lockstep together. For today and this event, we are not the little T town of Johnson and village of Johnson. We are the big T town of Johnson, one family, one community, doing what is best and necessary for the whole community of Johnson. Each member of the human flight command structure has been delegated certain responsibilities in keeping all members in the loop. I am the liaison between our local fire department and EMS, Emergency Medical Services. Our fire chief, RJ West, has a protocol in place for all types of responses. As first responders are riding at the fire station, he will decide what equipment and how many firefighters will respond. He has a plan in place to protect our firefighters and how to decontaminate after each incident. Ian Brad Curry, the supervisor for NAMS or Northern Emergency Management Services, has a plan in place for a protocol for each type of response that may occur. They both have well thought out processes and have trained all responders. As of now, they have proper PPE for these calls. The select board met Monday night and declared a state of emergency for the town of Johnson. All boards, commissions, committees, within the town were ordered to suspend meetings until further notice. We have an obligation to maintain continuity of service, thereby we directed the departments to establish work schedules where if an employee becomes infected with the COVID-19, commonly known as coronavirus, we can minimize the risk of infecting the whole department and can maintain a reduced level of service. Department heads and their backups are working schedules that reduces exposure between them. As an example of this, the town clerk and the assistant clerk are working opposite times, so we have someone to sign the checks and pay the bills if one of them should become ill. The town clerk's office is closed to the public. Dog licenses, while due April 1st, the select board has waived the late fee until May 1st. Some other actions of the community are the Johnson Food Shelf will be providing curb stop delivery and not open to the public. The library is closed to the public with some modified book delivery options. The librarian is working with the school officials to make available days and times for students without internet access to be able to get into the library. NVU is shut down. Vermont Studio Center is shut down. The Nazarene and United Churches are shut down for public service. They are exploring internet accessible options. The Sheriff's Department, Fire Department, NIMS, Ambulance Service have all implemented PPE protocols to minimize exposure. We are working with nonprofits to assist vulnerable populations. We have reached out to our stores in the state about food securities. We have made a special COVID-19 page on our website to upload the community announcements. 
links to the CDC and Vermont Health Department's website, as well as a volunteer form. This website is www.kelljohnson.com backslash COVID-19. And you can see it behind us. That is the address for the town's website. Our village annual meetings and elections that were originally planned for April have been rescheduled for the first week of June. When the exact date is selected, we will go through the proper notification to all village residents. In order to protect your office and outside employees in the case of CDC guidelines, the trustees have adopted new ones. And also in coordination with the select board, the town and village are working together to continue services from within the office, even as the office is closed to the public. The trustees have a recommendation from Troy Dolan that the daily schedule with one outside employee working in the village during normal working hours. If an incident occurs, during those hours, this employee will respond quickly, evaluate the situation, and if necessary, call in more staff for equipment. We need to keep our staff healthy. At this time, all outages and emergency procedures are unchanged. Please use the following contact to report a utility outage or emergency. During business hours, call 635-2611. Outside business hours, call 1-844-287-6709. Normal meter readings will continue for electric, water, and sewer. If anyone is experiencing financial difficulties, please call our office to work out for future payments. Payments can also be made by mail, or drop offs, or phone with credit cards, or online payments. Our sewer plant employees have asked us to please pass on to please use only toilet paper from flushing down the toilet. Other items, such as paper towels or other items, may clog up our sewer line and it's hard to process at our plant. As the Johnson EMB, I activated the ICS Incident Command System at the end of last week. This team consists of six people, each bringing skills that are vital to this event. Gordy Smith, to my left, is the Emergency Management Coordinator, EMC. He is the uh, EMD backup. Uh, but I don't think we lost power, just our lights are timed out. <laughs> uh, I would also just make note that this is the, the only time Gordy and I have been in the same place at the same time. We're trying to keep a social distance in because the heat is the backup for, for myself. And I would also note that there is a vice chair for the select board as well as vice chair for the trustees. So if you know, either one of us became ill, the operations can continue. Also adding for Gordy, with what he had already reported about, he is the liaison to this team, to the fire department and the NIMS ambulance service. The second member is Nat Kinney. He is an EMC. He's the second EMD backup, liaison to the sheriff's office, as well as the volunteers and nonprofits. Brian Story, Public Information Officer, PIO, Liaison to Town Employees and Town Groups. Meredith Dolan, PIO Backup, as well as Liaison to Village Employees and Village Groups. Scott Myers is the Planning and Coordination Oversight, working with all members of the team. And myself as the EMD Overall Responsibility for the Operation. While not officially a member of the team, Rosemary Oliver is looped in to the team due to any financial impl implications. I'd like to thank all citizens for being considerate when shopping in Sterling Market and the other markets in the village here community for not hoarding items and thus preventing others from the basics that we all need. Speaking as town fire warden, at this time I will continue to issue burn permits, but it will be on a case by case basis until it starts to dry up. And I may implement a burn. For those that don't know, that my home phone number is 635 7550. It's called and leave a message and I'll get back to you. My village manager, Meredith, is working from home but is still in charge of all village departments. I want to thank all elected board members, all employees, and our community citizens working together to get through this. Special thanks go to Rosemary, Meredith, and Brian's story who are working behind the scenes at the administrative level where many may not see the dedicated work. 
For those who don't know me, I like to end with a positive note. Sugaring season is in full swing, and I recommend you to get some fresh maple syrup and on those pancakes. Thank you. As this was a new type of commu communication method that uh, we've never used here, uh, we would appreciate your feedback, and you would be able to email Brian Story at TOJ Administrator at talentjohnson.com or call the municipal office at 635 2611. Just quickly before we open it up for questions, um, we did have a conference call that ended a little while ago with Vermont Emergency Management. These are becoming regular conference calls at, at least once a week now. Uh, most of the information is stuff that everyone out there is already aware of. You're hearing on the news and from the new governor's conference. Uh, there was 200, as of today, they reported 270 people tested, 28 positive, and as was reported yesterday, we have had two fatalities. Uh, some of the PPE that's being sent out from the state is limited. They're, prioritizing it to hospitals and long care uh, facilities. There is a, uh, they have closed DMV, but they've got extended 90 days for uh, registrations and licenses. Uh, some good news that has come out was new news at the conference. FEMA has declared this event for all states as a, a national declaration which frees up about 75% reimbursement for any municipalities or our expenses that we may, may incur on this event. And another stipulation they're not gonna require in this type of an event versus normal events with FEMA is a 30-day requirement for application. Uh, there was mention that they're urging us to pass on to use uh, constraint on store supplies. They're being stressed, the uh, stores, to keep their supplies in full. And while they recognize we need to stock up, they're cautioning about, you know, do not hoard stuff, basically. So with that, we're ready to open it up for any questions. If it's something we're not able to answer, you make note of it and post it up at the future time. A uh, quick question. Um, did I hear that Sterling Market is closing, um, opening only to elders for the first hour or so? They have posted on their Facebook page, I believe the times are 7 to 8 a.m. They're asking uh, that that time be reserved for seniors and those of the population who are very vulnerable. Yes. Good question. I did go into Sterling Market this morning about 7.30 on purpose to see how things were going. And there were only 10 to 15 people in the store that were actually shopping. It was a very easy to get in and get out. So for the seniors, for those that are challenged, it should be a, a good setup. If nobody's got any questions, is there anyone uh, who wants to share their thoughts on this kind of a communication method? Is it worthwhile? I think it's great. Thank you. Eric, this is Dan Noyes. This is the Zoom is what a lot of the towns are starting to use, even um, trying to look at um, the state. So this is a good format. And uh, I think once people get used to it, you'll really start, you know, it will be easier for folks second, third time around. So. Thank you for your work. Thank you. I like it. I think it's very comfortable. Eric and I wanted to make sure, and actually all of our committee and our staff wanted to make sure that everyone in the community knew that we were all working together. We have plans. The plans are changing daily and hourly, but we wanted you to know that all of us are doing the best we can for our community. Thank you for that. This is blue charted waters for us. 
Typically, when we have an event here in Johnson, as most people are very much aware, it's in the water and it's a flood event. Um, however, we are getting inundated with emails all day long. Uh, it is such a fast changing and, and, um, environment that this thing is in. But we are getting daily, at least daily, and usually more, many times a day, updates. I can add one more thing that I didn't have to explain, but uh, all of our utilities and our staff have got backup plans. So if, heaven forbid, some of our guys do get sick, we've got other resources to come in so that the sewer plant's going to work, the water's going to work, the power if it does go off, the part is off right now, will be restored. So we do have some other plan in case things get worse, some of our staff do get sick. So we, we do have some backup ideas. If anyone has interest on what the sheriff's office may be doing, we've got a letter from or a statement from the sheriff's department. Um, they're uh, maintaining company way of service, maintaining everything operational that we have posted on our website it's listed behind us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good evening.